C scepter, or is it sometimes referred to as CAM, standing for Common Anti-Air Modular Missile, is a surface-to-air missile system developed by MBDA for the British Royal Navy and Italian Naval Services as a short-range missile system, designed to replace the aging Seawolf system developed back in the 1970s. The project originated from a technology demonstration program funded both by MBDA and the MOD as part of the UK's future local area air defence system, with phase one of the project working on the seeker, launch system, data link equipment as well as the open system architecture. Phase two will consist of making subsystems capable of withstanding high speed flight as well as the mid-course guidance system. In the 2010 SDSR, one of the good things to come out of the review was the requirement for a new missile to replace Seawolf, with CAM being approved to continue with the weapons trials. And so, by mid-2011, the soft vertical launch system was proven, culminating in the successful launch of the system from a truck-mounted launcher. After some tweaking to the internals to make the missile better, the Ministry of Defence announced that M. BDA would develop a navalised version known as Sea Scepter for about £438 million. The missile would prove to be a standout short range service to air missile system in development as the Royal New Zealand Navy would actually select the system for their Anzac frigates and the Chilean and Brazilian navies would also jump on the bandwagon to acquire this system. Italy, on the other hand, would have their Italian section of MBDA and they would produce the CAM-ER, which would be the Extended Range Capable Missile. The Spanish Navy would select this system for their F-110 frigates, but instead they would lose out to the RIM-162 Evolved Sea Sparrow Block II missile system. The missiles would be 3.2 meters long, however the ER version, the Extended Range version, would be 4 meters long. They have a diameter of 16 centimeters and are propelled by a solid rocket motor capable of sending a missile at Mark III out to 13.5 nautical miles from the defending ship. However, the extended range version can go a bit further. The system uses a main radar to detect, lock onto incoming weapons, and then will cold launch out of the tube before igniting the rocket motor and flying off to hopefully blow it out of the sky. Guidance is done by the acquisition from the upstream on the plot. When the missile is in the air, it has a two-way data link feed informing the ship of what the missile is doing, how far away it is, and what speed it's doing. In the nose, it has an active seeker head, so it has a tiny little radar that will search for an incoming target. The ships that are to mount this weapon system, or currently do have this weapon system mounted, would have to ditch their old fire control radars for their old surface to missile systems. Take the Type 23 for instance, they would have to ditch the 911 fire control radars, which were inherent for launching and tracking Seawolf. However, this would have to be now ditched, as Sea Scepter utilizes the ship's main radar system. So, with a Type 23, you're looking at the Type 997 Artisan three dimensional radar system. Current open source information suggests that Sea Scepter is being used on, or is to be used on, Royal Naval, Chilean, Royal New Zealand and Brazilian surface combatants. The Italian Navy uses CAM-ER, utilising its extended range and replacing the Aster-15 surface-to-air missile. The British Army uses CAM on land as the Land Scepter surface-to-air missile system. The Brazilian Marine Corps uses a CAM variant and the Italian Army and Air Force uses CAM-ER in small little bastions. Looking further ahead into the future, Sea Scepter is going to be the primary surface to air missile system of the Type 26 vessels and its variants from the Royal Navy, the Royal Australian Navy, as well as the Royal Canadian Navy. Thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Before you go, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with my latest videos, as well as commenting and, if you want to, subscribe to the Patreon page to support the channel. All I need to say is, here's a sneak peek at next week's video.